Good afternoon, everyone. We'll begin shortly. Welcome, everyone. We'll start shortly here. Okay. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the fourth day of Owen Forward, a week-long celebration of Vanderbilt's Owen Graduate School of Management. My name is Eric Cahill, and I'm the Associate Dean for Development and Alumni Relations. I want to thank you for joining us for today's discussion, a very special behind the scenes look at the historic and upcoming renovation and expansion of Management Hall. This project is made possible in part by the generous support of 20 donors known as the Owen Century Partners, contributing over $13 million to this project. The renovation and expansion of Owen's home will include a total of 48,000 square feet, extending the size of Management Hall by 50% or better to accommodate the wider Vanderbilt and Nashville business communities. We are excited to be joining the top ranked peer schools in completing a significant 21st century transformation. We are thrilled to be joined by two of the architects leading the project, Cliff Gailey and Sam Lasky of William Ron Associates. Since joining William Ron Associates 31 years ago, Cliff has led many of the firm's college and university buildings, public buildings, and cultural facilities. His work includes projects at Duke, Johns Hopkins, University of Virginia, MIT, Stanford Business School, and the Harvard Business School. His civic work includes buildings for the Boston Public Library, the Boston Symphony Orchestra, the Baltimore Symphony Orchestra, and the Cleveland Clinic. A fellow of the American Institute of Architects, his projects have received six of the firm's 12 National Honor Awards from the American Institute of Architects. He is a graduate of Harvard College and from the Harvard Graduate School of Design. Since Sam joined William Ron Associates 22 years ago, he has focused on complex institutional projects and their relationship to the public realm. These include projects such as the Cancer Center for the Cleveland Clinic and the United States Courthouse in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Sam has been involved in most of the firm's business school projects as well, including Harvard Business School and the Brandeis International Group. Cliff and Sam recently completed King Open Public School in Cambridge, Massachusetts the first and largest net zero admission school in Mass. Sam has taught design studios at Harvard University's Graduate School of Design on multiple occasions. He is a fellow of the American Institute of Architects and is a graduate of Yale University and the Harvard University Graduate School of Design. Cliff and Sam will be joined in conversation today by Dean Eric Johnson, the Ralph Owen Dean and Bruce D. Henderson Professor of Strategy, who has been the driving force behind this renovation and expansion. Eric was one of the youngest professors to receive tenure at Owens history, winning the Dean's Teaching Excellence Award twice. He has earned grants from the National Science Foundation, Department of Homeland Security, and the National Institute of Standards and Technology. In addition to his responsibility as Dean of Owen, Eric currently serves as department editor for the journal Production and Operations Management, and has served on numerous, numerous editorial boards, including Electronic Markets, Interfaces, International Journal of Logistics and Management, Management Science, and Operations Research. Before I th turn things over to our participants, audience members are reminded they may submit questions anonymously through the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. Eric, Cliff, and Sam, please take it away. Awesome. Well, welcome, everybody. Really excited to have a great turnout today uh, to talk about our building. And it surely is an exciting uh, time, something that uh, uh, a lot of uh, thinking and work and uh, dreaming, I will say, uh, that has gone into this project uh, even years before I arrived here as Dean, uh, certainly something uh, that's been on the mind of Owen alumni for, for many, many years. And, you know, I want to first say before we get to go, go into this, there's just so many people to thank uh, uh, for all the progress that's happened to date. And uh, Sam and Cliff, who are going to be on this call, and their team, uh, who many of them are on the call, have just done a spectacular job looking at our goals and translating those goals into what we think is just a beautiful design. Um, and of course, 
on the Vanderbilt side, um, uh, a number of people that have put countless hours into this. Uh, Caitlin, Caitlin Mullaney, uh, who's no longer with us now at University of Texas, but has been and was a huge driving force of this project. Julie Covington and facilities, Sal Vazna on my finance team, uh, Lindsay Donald, uh, Professor Nancy Heyer, and on and on and on. Um, many folks who spent lots and lots of time on this project along with alumni board, the board of visitors, um, different groups of faculty and staff who uh, participated in all kinds of breakouts along with a lot of our students over the last few years. So there's just been huge effort of, of a lot of different people and we're kind of on the cusp of, uh, of really making this a reality and we're just excited to share this with you today. And you know, when I look at this, these goals, um, you know, these goals, we sat down uh, with uh, Cliff and Sam when the project really began and uh, hammered out a set of goals that have been really guiding forces uh, in the whole process. And, you know, th they have in so many ways been our kind of beacon uh, for this project. The first one was uh, thinking about how we represented ourselves to Nashville. Um, you know, one of my favorite jokes, and many people are, are tired of this joke, but, you know, when you drive down 21st Avenue, all you alumni and friends, you know, you know, you know what it looks like uh, when you go by Owen today. It's a giant red brick wall that, that basically says stay out uh, in many ways. Uh, um, uh, and we said we really want to transform that. Uh, we want to create a really welcoming front door. We kind of currently have kind of two side doors and a, a few other back doors and but we don't really have a, a true kind of really welcoming kind of front door and a really welcoming presence to Nashville. And so much has changed in Nashville since uh, the building that we're in today was built. I mean, when that building came online in 1982, Nashville was a completely different city than it is today. And the excitement uh, of the city and the excitement of business in the city. And we want to engage that. You know, we want to be part of that. We want them uh, the business community to feel welcome to come here and we want to reach out to them. And so that was really one key visionary part of this project. And you'll see how that's been um, rendered in an architectural design. The second was to not lose sight of who we are, our personal scale, uh, our collaborative team-based environment that we work in, um, just the close niche, close nature of our community. Uh, we didn't want to lose that. Uh, you know, we want to build a world-class facility, um, but not lose that personal scale. And, and uh, trust me, there was a lot of time spent by the architectural team observing our community in action on a Thursday night or uh, during a class change or on a Friday or a Saturday or, you know, a Monday morning, whatever, um, to observe our community, how it interacted and really to be careful not to disrupt or ruin in some sense, what is wonderful about Owen, you know, that, that feeling of home uh, that, that all of us share. And then um, obviously we want to have the best technology, the best uh, classrooms to be able to deliver uh, a world-class education. And, um, and in all that, as I started out to begin with, really engage the broader community, um, reach out to our corporate friends, our uh, many of the companies that do business with us, that do corporate education with us, our, our students that are here on weekends, like our executive MBA students or our masters of management, healthcare students, to really be able to touch all of them. And um, I think you'll be excited to see how those uh, goals were achieved in this in this design. So with that, let's uh, let's turn the page and start looking at the design. Terrific, uh, Dean. Thanks very much, um, and thank you everybody for uh, uh, gathering today. We're Sam and I are delighted to be with you all and uh, uh, and talking to you about the transformation that we've been uh, dreaming together with with many of you and and those that. Uh, the Dean outlined and a transformation that really wants to uh, achieve something special, but also as, uh, uh, as the Dean suggested, hold on to the essence of Owen and, 
and that's a fascinating challenge for us and one that uh, uh, we, we do with many of uh, our institutional clients who are many of your peers in, in, in so many ways. And, and uh, Dean Johnson suggested I might share just a couple of those with you just to give you a flavor of where we're coming from. But again, we were wanting this to be a very Owen building. So as we work with many of your peers and we start with uh, Harvard Business School, we recognize that, that all institutions are different, even as so many of you are pushing the envelope on in innovation and excellence in your own particular ways. So for the Harvard Business School around convening and exec ed was, was very much in their DNA and uh, working at Stanford on uh, uh, a master plan to move the, G uh, the GSB campus, a three-year collaboration there, uh, that was a totally different kind of uh, community and set of goals. And if we look more broadly across uh, higher ed, there are many institutions that are trying to establish uh, a new front like you all are, whether on a, a busy street or in a new part of campus uh, like at Duke. Or, or if we look at, uh, uh, at UVA or Wash U, uh, one is facing a quad, another facing uh, uh, a street with uh, retail very much like your 21st Avenue. So a lot of different uh, uh, components that we're, we're bringing to the table. We step beyond higher ed for a moment and look at the next slide, uh, excellence in healthcare. How do we, we transform uh, their campus in a way to uh, put the patients first, which is very much uh, a Cleveland Clinic DNA. Uh, next, uh, working with the GSA and, and redefining uh, how to make uh, uh, courthouses uh, not off-putting, but welcoming, letting justice be on display. Mm -hmm. Uh, or uh, on the next, working with uh, a cultural institution to push the, the envelope on how music can flow inside and outside in a particular way that is special to uh, Tanglewood. So we bring an excitement to these kinds of transformations that are all about picking up the special DNA of uh, particular leading clients and have and, and been fascinated by uh, what makes Owen Owen. And so we really uh, appreciate the opportunity to be around the campus for so, so long watching and participating and, and observing. So with that, why don't we, uh, we we're gonna uh, talk about each of the four goals. Uh, Sam and I will tag team. I will start off with the first and end with the fourth and Sam will do the middle two. So why don't we talk about the uh, outward uh, connections and uh, and uh, if we go to the next slide, just remind ourselves that uh, your site, uh, you can see it um, right along 21st Avenue, is at the edge of campus. And uh, it's a site that we think has quite a bit of potential. And if you zoom in uh, a bit, you can see, uh, you can be reminded of the building as a, a pretty solid inward focused building, uh, one actually that's uh, across from a parking lot that, that we're looking to transform into a quad. And uh, there's a sliver of site between 21st Avenue and the building, which will be the site of the uh, a new addition. Uh, and you'll see how we're using that addition to achieve this outward focus, this idea of creating a sense of welcome. So let's switch to the next slide and, and you can see uh, how both the parking went away from the new quad and how we took the addition and are creating both a new uh, active uh, face on 21st Avenue uh, and also a uh, face, a new front with a front porch with an overhang and uh, outdoor seating area uh, to really grab hold of that new quad and, and, and create a sense of presence for, for Owen uh, on the campus and along 21st Avenue. So it's a, a, all about uh, uh, an outward focus and uh, a sense of activity on display. And that volume that's at the corner is this convening space that we'll be talking about. And I think if we, uh, we can do a couple of more before and afters as we drop down to street level. So let's go to 21st Avenue. So this, this is the uh, stealth bunker that is uh, 
you are uh, you are building uh, along 21st Avenue behind these large trees and a real opportunity to uh, to reach out to uh, the city and the community. If we look at the next slide, it'll give you a sense of that transformation. So classrooms, offices, the large convening space, uh, all look out onto 21st Avenue. The fourth floor sets back and turning the corner into the quad, you see that uh, front porch that really creates a strong, almost civic uh, presence uh, onto that campus uh, green space. And uh, you can see the materiality here is, is we're trying to be forward looking contemporary and yet feel of Vanderbilt. So that's a crab orchard stone that you, you will find uh, across campus in, in various buildings. We're trying to pick up that materiality uh, to link this uh, uh, new building into the fabric of the campus. And now let's go to the next view, next before and after because the idea of a front door, where is the front door? How welcoming does it, um, does it feel? And there's something fortress-like about, about this, uh, even the recessiveness of the entry that we, we worked hard to overcome. And so the next slide will show how uh, the entrance being part of a porch with convening on the right, uh, outdoor seating in the middle with a cafe beyond and to the left, an entrance that we'll, Sam will talk about in a minute. But before we get there, Above the entrance is uh, student study areas. Above that is a faculty lounge and conference room. And above that is uh, an outdoor terrace uh, for the fourth floor executive programs and event space. So trying to really allow the, the activity of the building to animate the green space and feel like you're already part of Owen even as you're uh, approaching from afar. So Sam, why don't you take us inside the building? But well, before we before we jump there, oh, um, a couple of great questions have come in already that are related to where we're at. So we'll try to pick up a few questions as we go that uh, fit with the spot in the presentation. And the first question was, um, were we ever considering uh, completely abandoning our current site and moving elsewhere, uh, uh, moving particularly off campus uh, to a site? And certainly uh, as part of the design process, um, the team did spend a good bit of time looking at other designs of the on the current site, um, as well as there was a lot of discussion of what moving off site might mean. And uh, ultimately, what we really decided was on the on the location was that we were basically sitting on one of the best locations on campus, right next to the law school, right next to the medical school, and the library um, with the opportunity to have one of the only green spaces on 21st Avenue. Uh, and I'll have uh, Cliff talk about that a little bit more. And, um, you know, it, it, it was just too good to be true. I mean, in some sense, it, you know, there's, there are plenty of business schools that have made that decision. They outgrew their space and they jumped, you know, out to the other side of the stadium, which has always been talked about for us, to be honest, you know, why, why not move out by the stadium or out into one of the parking lots off campus uh, in the other direction. But, you know, we are all about collaboration. We are all about connection to the university. And to imagine what it would be like to be out by the stadium, uh, isolated and alone, um, really is antithetical to what Owen and Vanderbilt is about. And I think if you talk to even a lot of students at those schools, I mean, I can think of two or three of them and probably uh, you can also, uh, the schools that made those choices to move the business school way off campus, while at first it felt kind of good because they got a lot of space uh, to work with, um, you know, they end up being very isolated, very disconnected from campus. And you know, when you think about business, we sh we're the crossroads of campus. I mean, you know, whether you're in medicine or in engineering or in law, I mean, we are the place that convenes all of those groups. Um, and so uh, our location was just really hard to give up. Um, but, but another question, and I'll let uh, Cliff talk to this a little bit, is about our building's relationship to the university campus in, in, in this design? Well, I would say um, one of the things that is uh, 
exciting to us about the, the placement of this and how we can uh, not only relate to uh, the existing buildings, uh, but also relate to where the campus is going. Um, we are the landscape that is around our building, um, not only the new quad, but even the pedestrian pathway, uh, Sam, you can probably trace it there, is the beginning of a continuous path that will make the uh, 21st Avenue corridor much more pedestrian and wheel-based transports. Uh, they, they're dubbing it the walk and roll uh, as a way of really uh, creating an, an active, uh, healthy way of folks from law, from law all the way up to uh, medicine uh, uh, connecting uh, along the uh, 21st Avenue corridor. The other thing I would say is even as we've been working at Vanderbilt these last several years, we've watched 21st Avenue itself become a, uh, you know, rise out of the ground. And you're, we're looking at in the foreground at, at some future building projects. I could imagine in 10 years, some pretty excite, exciting developments there that will make uh, uh, the, the business school feel that much more in the middle of things, not on the edge of things. And so uh, we really see this as a, an up and coming uh, uh, edge of campus that, that could very easily become the center of something very exciting. Great. Well, let's, let's go into the building, Sam. Yeah, so thanks, um, Dean and, and Cliff. Uh, so the, the transformation of the front door of Owen and the sense of welcome uh, is not just about what happens on the exterior and the facade here. It's, um, it's about extending that sense of welcome as you come into the building. And so many of you probably remember that uh, as you walk through those front doors today, there's a nice sign here, but you're confronted with the back of the elevator right away. And so it's not terribly welcoming to um, step in and four feet in, walk into a wall and not really know where to go. And so this view shows, is, is basically the equivalent view where the plan is to move that elevator and change it and really widen and open up the view. So that as soon as you walk into the building, you can see one of the great things about Management Hall today is of course, that glass wall that opens into that courtyard space. And um, many of you probably know that over, uh, over the last couple of years, that um, courtyard has been redone and uh, the landscape has been, has been uh, really improved and there's outdoor furniture and places to gather and sit there. And so that, that space has become much more used over the last few years. And so it's a real asset to the existing building. And, um, and so getting to see that right of way and, uh, and feel much more welcome. We'll talk about this more in a minute, but off to the right in this view, you can see the new cafe space. And so um, really letting people uh, kind of come right into the building and, and start to be part of it rather than having that kind of off-putting experience of walking into a wall. Um, so that, that's, that's a good lead. Go ahead. And that, that certainly it was a big, big piece of the of the design, this entryway. Are there other things? I see some stairs off to the left. What, what, what are those stairs about and why are they part of the entryway? Yeah, I think um, we'll talk about this more in a little bit, but there, uh, there has been a set of stairs over here out in, the, out in that atrium space that was a little bit kind of disruptive to being able to use that space. And so opening that up, but still maintaining a stair that you can see right away as you walk in to feel a sense of connection up to the second floor. You know, so much of the life of Owen is happening on these two floors, the first and the second floor. And so we wanted to make sure that that was a very strong connection. And um, I think that's a good segue to talk a little bit more about other transformations here on the first floor to bring, bring more of the qualities that make Owen so strong really to the first floor. So, you know, we should say that a last, um, a few years ago, the library was, was redone and it's a, you know, it's a, it's a great showcase of, of what the Dean was just describing, you know, these opportunities to bring in, you know, uh, CEOs, other speakers that are 
um, very high powered folks who, um, and yet have a very intimate personal scale, a setting that, uh, that brings together that world-class and personal scale. So the, the library is, is kind of emblematic of, of that. And, um, but if we look at some of the rest of the first floor, there are a lot of these uh, blank walls on you know, either direction. And so there's a lot of things that are going on behind these walls, but you don't know it. And, and so the, some of that spirit of Owen um, isn't infusing the first floor as soon as you walk in. And so, you know, here's a, here's a view, here's the current front door, here's that elevator that you walk right into, here are some of those blank walls. And so there's a real opportunity at the first floor we were finding to build on that, um, those qualities of Owen and try to bring more of that and put it on display on the first floor. So here's a view of the transformation that's planned. And uh, this red line shows the line between the existing building and everything here above that line is the addition. But the important thing here is that the, the extent of the project is not just this addition. I think you can see we're touching almost everywhere else on the first floor and really trying to transform the whole experience of the first floor. So let me zoom in here just to focus on a couple more things. So here's the new front door and uh, no elevator there. Elevator moved over to here. Here's that stair that the Dean was just talking about and a welcome desk so that there would actually be a person to, uh, to greet you and, um, and help you understand where to go. And a new cafe space as a kind of at the crossroads of everything on this first floor, a place where students can gather uh, in the day, in the evening, you can meet someone, you can wait for someone. And um, so really trying to build that center of activity. We'll talk more about this multi-purpose room, but um, we were just talking about convening and, uh, and the business school as a kind of central player amongst all the different um, programs and schools at Vanderbilt. And this room is really gonna be an opportunity to build on that. Um, but uh, here on this, um, East side of the existing atrium, we're gonna transform that blank wall into what we're calling the collaboration porch. Um, you know, one of, one of the things that happened in the library renovation was, was realizing there was this huge demand for spaces for students to work together, collaborate together in groups. And that demand has not satiated even with the library project. And, that, and so this is a chance to really create spaces for students to work together. And that collaborative spirit is so fundamental at Owen and so try to Bring, bring proof of that um, to the first floor where it's not really happening so much today. And then also these, the programs and center spaces here, uh, currently behind a, a solid wall. This is, this is an excellent example of that collaborative spirit. Um, students working together on um, kind of joint uh, studies programs um, with students from other schools and uh, they get together and work. And so what we're planning to do here is really open that up with a glass wall and a garage door and, and showcase that activity that's just so emblematic of the uh, transdisciplinary efforts at Vanderbilt. So I just wanna show a couple views here. So this is the, the courtyard on the right, looking back towards the front door, that staircase. Here's that collaboration porch. So you think about the the kind of blank white walls of the, of the um, first floor today. This is really trying to make places along the, the, um, the atrium where people would be during the daytime. You know, obviously during closing bell, the atrium gets very used, but um, what about the rest of the time? So we're trying to give people reasons to be on the first floor, you know, throughout the day, throughout the week. Um, we touched on this stair that's, uh, that's kind of gets in the way of being able to use the atrium for a lot of things today. And so that's where this idea of, of uh, removing that and putting it off to the right, as you can see here. So this really opens up um, the atrium to be more usable, uh, creates the cafe, view to the cafe, view to that multi-purpose room, the collaboration porch. And then here's a view of that new stair, the front door, the welcome desk, the new elevator. And um, you can see off here to the right, the, the uh, uh, garage door open into the uh, collaborative um, work that's happening in the programs and centers space. Okay. 
hopefully that gives everyone a, a sense of how the first floor can be transformed to be a day-to-day a -day center of activity at Owen. Sam, uh, one, one quick question. You've touched on it a good bit, but someone asks, you know, the many business school buildings have open atriums, but do you plan to have more spaces with sunlight than our existing building? Yeah, great, great question. Um, I think uh, one of the things, I'll go back to this view. One of the things that, um, that I think is gonna happen here by really opening up the front door, having glass at this cafe, and instead of the glass block, having real glass that you can see through, um, here there'll be daylight coming from more than one direction. You know, right now the glass is all at the courtyard, but here, you know, you're at the cafe, you're gonna be able to look outside in more than one direction. You'll be able to see through into the multi-purpose room and out the, the glass wall here towards 21st. So I think in a lot of ways, wherever you are, you will have a, a more than one way that you can be looking out and, and seeing the outside. Super, thanks. So that, um, we use this stair as a good uh, segue to move upstairs to the second floor and, uh, and touch base on, on some of the changes to the classrooms that are planned. So here's the, here's the building today. Um, many of you probably remember classrooms 216, 18, 20, and 222, all here along the east edge of the second floor. And these classrooms are, well, let's just say it, they're, they're kind of cramped for the number of students that you're trying to have in them. Um, there are problems with sight lines with this flat wall here, students at the edges, you know, it's really hard to see the screen there. And um, probably if you, many of you remember being either too hot or too cold in these classrooms. So there, there are a number of things that make them challenging um, as teaching spaces. And so the plan here is with the addition to have the room to right size those classrooms and, and introduce some new types of teaching spaces. So just zooming in again, uh, taking two of those three classrooms and, and turning them into um, right sized tiered classrooms uh, curved organization and a kind of shaped front of the classroom so that wherever you're seated, you have good views towards the presenter, but also you have better views towards one another for the kinds of conversations that can be so important in case study style learning. We're also planning to introduce a flat floor classroom that can be used for active learning um, and uh, kind of student-based project discussions in class. And there will be, um, you'll see it when we get to the fourth floor too. So there'll, there'll be quite a few of these uh, flat floor classrooms that will allow a variety of types of teaching to happen um, within Owen. And also you can start to see on the second floor a number of new uh, spaces um, for students to work and gather and collaborate like we were talking about on the first floor. Um, we're also going to be doing some renovations to classroom 222 and 230, changing the front of room to bring in better technology and, and fix the issues with heating and cooling. Um, we also want to touch quickly on uh, Aver Bush, which is, as you know, is the main kind of auditorium lecture space in the building, but uh, it's very steeply raked. It's a little vertiginous if you're in there. <laughs> and um, but many of you probably remember that uh, given the triangular shape, it's kind of weird. The, the fewest number of seats are closest to where the presenter is. And so the majority of people in any event are far away. And so that doesn't build as, um, as strong a sense of connection between audience and speaker. And so the, the plan is to reorient and, and redo Averbush so that it's kind of an expanded version of the tiered classrooms, still about 75 people, and, uh, and have that horseshoe shape, that semicircular shape that really lets more people feel connected to the speaker and to one another for convening types of events in those rooms. And I just wanna jump up to the, uh, to the third floor and say that, um, you know, improvements to teaching are not just about what happens in the classroom. There, uh, there's a lot of support that um, students at Owen count on from administrators and 
staff, especially in the one-year programs and executive programs. And a lot of those staff are not in the building, you know, in management hall today. They're in um, other buildings around campus or off campus. And so we've been calling this the chance to bring everyone home, and bring, bring everyone at Owen back here on campus and make um, those uh, uh, leaders and administrators, staff of faculty of the, of the school much more available to students so that they can just come upstairs and talk with people if they have questions about uh, their work or their program or want advice or guidance. And so um, that's also part of, uh, of that mission of excellence in teaching. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump uh, back to this idea of um, engaging the broader community and let uh, let Cliff talk about some things both at the first and the fourth floor. So we, we talked a bit about engaging the broader community uh, from the outside looking in. Uh, let's now talk uh, about convening in particular uh, as a way of uh, bringing the outside in and, and really uh, for business schools convening is a, a fundamental way of expanding uh, a school's intellectual footprint uh, and really establishing connections both locally, regionally, and nationally. And so um, this multi-purpose space, uh, it was, is a, a central part of that. Uh, we wanted to make sure it wasn't simply a big space that sat empty throughout the day. We designed it in a way that uh, it should be used constantly throughout the day, but with a barn door, a sliding barn door on the ground floor and uh, a sliding glass wall on the second floor, it, be, it can become a standalone room, a, a room that is right near the front door, a room that is right near the cafe, a room that has food service support. But here you can see the double height nature of that space. You can see a stair going up to those classrooms uh, that Sam was pointing to beyond, but here uh, with the glass doors closed, uh, that upper level becomes a balcony that's part of the convening space and the barn door on the left can close. And so now you have uh, an acoustically uh, sound room. We, we've got special glass overlooking the street uh, and uh, a video screen and a space that really is gonna be quite flexible. If you go to the next page, you'll see uh, that it, it's going to get a lot of daylight to the point that was the question that was asked earlier. And, and we always talk about daylight coming from two sides, not just one as being uh, important for balanced daylight. But, but this slide really uh, uh, is, a, is a snapshot in the ways that uh, this space can be, uh, can pivot from one type of use to another. And what's really important in that pivot is that we have behind the cafe, we have storage for furniture to move in and out, and we have a catering kitchen as well so that uh, uh, things can, uh, uh, the space can adjust quickly and can serve uh, a wide range of, uh, of needs. So if we go now up to the fourth floor, um, you can see the fourth floor. Now this is um, on a new footprint along 21st Avenue and the infill in the entry. And from that, we've got uh, a pretty special floor. It's got two large flat floor classrooms. If we zoom in, uh, oh, nice. it's, it's got a, uh, uh, a lounge uh, for uh, pre and post function activities, a servery uh, for uh, catered events and the outdoor terrace that I mentioned earlier uh, so this, this is designed to work for the executive programs, but it's also been designed to be another more intimate uh, uh, convening uh, space. Uh, and it, can, it allows, in fact, uh, the school to have simultaneous events occurring, uh, which, which uh, is very important. And so this, this really could be for uh, smaller uh, conferences or uh, alumni events or uh, 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 prospective uh, employers coming in. Uh, it could be a wide range of things that are uh, happening. Uh, and so flexibility and convening, whether at the top of the building or at the ground floor, uh, has been an important component to this transformation of giving you 
your school this opportunity to uh, uh, move forward uh, in a way that's special to Owen. Yeah, we were uh, we were there one morning when there were four events, reception kind of events happening simultaneously, all at you know eight thirty one morning, and some of them had gotten relegated to some hallways, that maybe weren't so nice. So this, this is going to allow that to change. Well, and especially for those that go into the evening, the the. So this gives you a sense of the, the vista from the fourth floor looking out over the quad in that uh, uh, event space. But if we move outside for a moment, you get a sense of uh, that you're surrounded by uh, skyline and uh, 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 the quad beyond. If one of the questions that came in along the way sure. was about the, uh, the energy uh, efficiency of this new expansion and also you know what uh, what we've done to uh, incorporate learnings from COVID and I'll quickly say that of course we're not building a, another building uh, just to handle the next pandemic but we learned a lot over the last six months and uh, thankfully had the time and the energy uh, to do a little project this fall that just looked at uh, things that we have learned and how they could be incorporated into design. And you know, one of the things I'm excited about is we will have probably the very first business school building built post COVID. So it, it'll be great to have those learnings in the building. Cliff, do you wanna just share a couple of those? Sure, uh, I will do that and, and Sam can chime in as well. But I, I would say the, the biggest thing that uh, we had uh, planned early from an energy point of view uh, was a direct outside air system, which uh, means that we're, we're not recirculating uh, uh, air. All air that's brought into a room is, is fresh air. And that obviously is, uh, have, will have a fundamental benefit for uh, uh, avoiding uh, airborne uh, contaminants, especially in a, a times of pandemic. Uh, but it certainly is, was one of those uh, uh, energy efficiency decisions that we made up front. Um, also, the stairs uh, on the lower floor that Sam uh, showed uh, right by the front door and also the stair in the multi-purpose room are, if you will, redundant uh, vertical circulation elements that um, al could allow in times of COVID uh, for people to, um, uh, as you go to and from class, to go up and down without uh, having to bump into uh, the class that is exiting just as you're about to uh, head to class. So trying to, trying to uh, create uh, multiple ways of moving vertically through the building. And in fact, encouraging people to use stairs and not, and not elevators is another, another component of that. But Sam, you might want to add uh, one or two thoughts as well. I think you've you've touched on the key ones. Um, you know that the multi-purpose room, as you may have seen on the on the outside, has a set of sunshades on the exterior um, to help control um, both heat gain and uh, glare within that room, uh, given that it's facing both east and south. And uh, and so there there are a number of things like that that are more obvious, but also just good practice. Um, you know, highly insulated uh, walls and, and um, they're just kind of details that m might not be as evident as you walk around when, when it's all open, but that are part of ensuring um, high energy performance. And, and we've been working closely with, with uh, Vanderbilt in general because Vanderbilt has its um, you know, blue sky initiative to dramatically alter and lower uh, energy usage on campus. And so um, this is, this is one of the uh, initial projects being built under that, um, that initiative on campus. Well, uh, guys, this is fantastic. And uh, going through this journey for the past several years with you has been wonderful. But uh, as you imagine, there are a number of questions that have come in, not only prior to this <laughs> session, but during the session. Uh, and there's a common theme out there right now that some people want to know and playing off of Cliff's discussion of getting people to move upstairs. Uh, a big question is, what about parking? What's gonna to happen to the parking? That sounds like a Dean question. <laughs> <laughs> so 
it, it, as you'll saw from the exterior uh, view, um, the the parking garage underneath the building will remain. There is a, a multi-level parking garage under the building today, and um, that uh, on the first floor will get reconfigured in many ways, um, expanded to include a loading dock for the building. It's kind of boring stuff, but really important for our catering uh, up to the fourth floor, a, sp a special back elevator that runs up to that fourth floor. And uh, that piece will, will remain. This, what is now our kind of second floor of parking um, will largely be uh, converted uh, over time into growth space for the school. So it's a, it's actually a wonderful set of space that, um, yeah, it can, it can, we can park a few cars there, but uh, over time, uh, what we really see that space getting built out to allow for future expansion, um, particularly of uh, faculty, of staff as we kind of grow out and things like, um, workout gyms, things like that, that we'd love to be able to add uh, to the design could all live in that area uh, as we kind of build out the build out that floor. Yeah, and in that same vein, let's talk a little bit about the outdoor space. Uh, there's a lot of questions uh, coming in regarding Nashville's favorable climate uh, and the ability to do, to do work outside and have outdoor activities. And I think this parting shot here really shows kind of taking advantage of that. Uh, but maybe you can talk a little bit about the quad that's being developed and the patio that's out front of the entr entryway. Mm -hmm. Well, why don't we why don't we work our way down? Uh, I think this is a, a great uh, uh, image to to reflect on. But if we go down to uh, the ground floor plan, Sam uh, and Sam mentioned the improvements to the uh, interior courtyard, which uh, you know was was in many ways a you know, strategic touch in terms of uh, where to put uh, planting and where to put paving and furniture. And, but perhaps the most important thing was a door that was added between the atrium, that door right there that allowed people to move back and forth. And you didn't have to make the decision to move around the sides to invest that time in order to go out or come back in. But from here, the idea of um, uh, having right at the front door, uh, a patio that uh, is right near a cafe, also right near the multi-purpose room, right at the front door, get a sense of people coming and going, and really allows the activity of the uh, Owen School to spill out into the quad and allow, the, uh, uh, allow that quad to become your front yard, if you will, uh, but also uh, in the recently, in the last uh, 18 months, the Divinity School has completed its new, new front door facing the quad. And I guess we can wait a little bit for the library at some point to uh, create a more a generous uh, connection to the uh, opposite side, the third side of this uh, green space. Uh, if we pull out Sam to a, a, a view of the full quad, maybe from the earlier part of the slide. Um, the, it, we have taken away the, uh, the parking, but we have allowed uh, a drop-off area uh, right in there. So cars can come up and drop off if, if folks need to be dropped off at the front door. It's an accessible way for that drop-off to take place, but there won't be parking there and it'll be uh, it will be all of those surfaces will be graded in a way that is ADA accessible. Um, and we've tried to uh, uh, leave as much uh, green space or create as much green space as we can, even as the walk and roll is coming up and the drop off loop is uh, getting to the front door. And that drop off loop is also uh, a fire uh, lane which continues uh, past our building, between our building and the, in the Divinity School and moves beyond. So there are a lot of things that have to take place in that green space, but at the end of the day, it's gonna be a wonderful place to uh, hang out and, and hopefully be a, a campus gathering spot for others around campus as well. Yeah, it looks fantastic. So here's another question, and I'm going to steal a bit of Eric's thunder on this as he says, are we going to fly the plane and build it at the same time? 
Uh, what, what is our project's timeline? Well, it, 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 it's really hard to imagine uh, that how this timing has worked out in, in so many ways, but our, our goal has been and continues to be to be breaking ground uh, this spring. And uh, we're on track for that. The Board of Trust is uh, seeing these final designs this month and um, we are working hard to close. We, we have some uh, funding that we're still working hard to close. We started off with a goal of to raise 20 million. We've raised 13. Uh, so we're working hard to close that goal. But, uh, but our plan, those things all coming together is to be building this spring. And in many ways, um, we've proved to ourselves over the last uh, three months that we can operate in a very different way. Um, and likely uh, there's never a better time to be building a building than in the middle of COVID. Uh, because to be truthful, many of the parts of the building that are gonna be touched during this construction process are not being actively used right now. Um, many of the classes that we're operating, we're already operating off campus in some cases, where we're operating a class, for example, in the library um, that will easily operate into uh, the next year and, and likely will have to, uh, given the state of the vaccine and where we're at in terms of immunization across campus. So all those things really work well for us uh, to be building. And if, if the timeline works, we will be in by the fall of 2021, 2022. So we started building in spring of 21 and uh, 16, 17 months later uh, are in the building for uh, uh, the beginning of fall. I should, I should just say in the attempt to be optimistic and if we assume that uh, we'll get everything under control with our pandemic and people will be back in the building and then it's how do you build it? Um, I should say, since we didn't know about COVID, we had developed with our partners at the, the contractor who will be building this, Barton Mallow, a, um, a plan to, um, to build while things were in operation and had worked through that very carefully. So there, there's a plan either way. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. Absolutely. There is. There is. So uh, another big question uh, that's coming in, not only through our uh, chat function, but even on my phone. Uh, <laughs> they found your phone. Wow. <laughs> um, You're surrounded. I, I, the, we're not getting out of this one. So the question is, is can alumni use the building? What can they use it for? You know, how is this going to be open uh, to them? Absolutely. Well, as I you know, started off uh, our talk uh, saying, you know, we really want the, building to embrace Nashville. And of course, that's our alumni uh, is a big, big piece of that. And uh, certainly uh, that the building will be accessible to alumni as it is today, but I think any ever so much so that I think the, starting with the cafe and uh, entering the building uh, will be a very welcoming place and will be welcoming uh, the business community into that multi-purpose room uh, regularly, I foresee that as a, as a pretty busy place for everything from the National Chamber of Commerce to uh, uh, Nashville Healthcare uh, Council to the Nashville Tech Council, any kind of group that we would want to host uh, for events in there. And right up to the fourth floor that you saw that uh, area where we have uh, two wonderful flat floor rooms, we really envision that as also kind of conferencing space, particularly when school isn't in session to be able to run little conferences up there, a servery, a, a wonderful balcony uh, for receptions, all of those really being places that we invite alumni uh, to be part of the school. Let me come just for add, coffee too, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Let me just remind us all that the very first meeting that we kicked off this project was with the alumni um, board. And that was incredibly valuable for us as a way of listening, not only with the ear of what makes Owen special and, and how did your experience, how can we understand your experiences, but also as, as alums and many, many of whom are in the Nashville area, uh, how, does, how can the new building uh, strengthen those connections going forward? So uh, uh, very much on our mind throughout the design process. 
So as we close out, I want to give you guys all a chance to maybe share some closing thoughts about the building, uh, the experience that we've gone through really for the last probably two and a half, three years, um, the learnings that we've had. So open the floor up to you guys to just share some final thoughts. I'll just say I want to, you know, our, our job is to try to make a building that is as Owen as possible. And part of Owen is, is its personal scale and obviously building a bigger building, you know, maybe is a little might be at odds with that, but we've tried to um, make sure all the spaces in the addition feel very connected to all the spaces in the existing building. And then, and really we wanted to, you know, not just build an addition, but transform as much of the existing building in a positive way as we could. And, and all of that was dependent on the generosity of the time that you all spent with us to help us understand who you were. And, um, and so that, that was so critical to what we, we're trying to do with you all. I think Sam, you said it beautifully. I just want to acknowledge um, that uh, you all have made us feel very welcome and uh, almost part of the family. And I just want to acknowledge two people from our office who uh, uh, Dasha Mijic and Nikul Patel who are on the call. If you could become visible, um, I'd appreciate it. But uh, uh, they've been instrumental in uh, and uh, Im important uh, collaborators. And we just uh, can't wait to cut the ribbon with all of you. One of the very fun things about this process is that Willie Ron uses lots of physical models as part of the way they interact with uh, the communities to elicit uh, ideas and uh, responses. And uh, uh, the team uh, felt like every time they arrived with yet another set of very large boxes of physical models that uh, Dasha, that every Sam, everybody would be uh, assembling and, and using them to create that conversation. But it has been uh, a real collaborative effort. I think very Owen, uh, when I think about our collaborative spirit, uh, it certainly has been true in the design of this building and um, just about every group that you could imagine has had not just one, but multiple sessions with the architects over the last two years, a very kind of measured and, uh, and careful design. And in the end, I think will be truly transformative. And that is really the goal, you know, when we step back and, and think about those big goals, you know, and, and embracing the community, being the best that we can be, being world-class at a personal scale and a building that is transformable for our business school. And uh, just really looking forward to uh, seeing that happen. Yeah, and just to kind of close it out, I think what's also exciting about this building is it's uh, really engaged the alumni community, uh, not only in the design and how it's gonna be, how, how traffic will flow through it, but also it's one of the first buildings on campus really to be donor led. And I think we're really, we're, we're so thankful for those folks that have stepped up early in this process uh, to support uh, what is really a transformation of Owen and going forward for the next 50 years. Absolutely. So we are, we are closing out Owen Forward. Uh, tomorrow is the last day, but I do want to say thank you to both Cliff, Sam, and Dean Johnson for joining us today and socializing the project with, uh, with our community here. Uh, to remind the audience, there is, at the conclusion of Owen Forward, a survey that will be sent to everybody, and I'm hoping you're going to take the time to fill it out. It will help us improve our programming here at Owen. Uh, as I mentioned, tomorrow is the last day of Owen Forward, and the second to last session begins at 9 a.m. Central, and that is called What Happens When I Press the Buy Button? Modern Securities Markets, and it's a discussion between Eric Knoll, class of 1990, and CEO of Context Capital Partners, and our own Craig Lewis, Madison S. Wigington, Professor of Finance. We hope you will join us. You can find registration information on our, on our website at business.vanderbilt.edu. And thank you for joining us this afternoon, and I hope to see many of you tomorrow. Goodbye. <laughs>